St. Augustine's Prairie Lakes neighborhood is crawling with ball pythons. FWC says these ball pythons are invasive and it has neighbors worried. Okay, it's an isolated and you get to determine what is our pet. Snakes, a lizard, and a crocodile were removed from a home in Beaver County, Pennsylvania. My lord, a snapping turtle. Wow. Hey guys, welcome back to Tipping Scales. You're watching The Scaly Scoop. I'm John, this is Butts, and today we're gonna talk about 24, it is 24 now, ball pythons released in Florida. This is gonna be a short video because I'm gonna film a second video tonight. You and I are gonna hang out, we're gonna have some snacks, and we're gonna watch Reptile Royalty, and we're gonna chat about it. But you'll see that episode next week. For right now, let's talk about this infestation in Florida. So it's hit the news that 22 ball pythons were found in St. Augustine, Florida in the neighborhood. They were found in the street, they were found under car hoods, they've been found all over the place. For the last month, a total of 22 is what they said. They just recently found two more, so it's 24 now. How many times have we heard about this? Not a lot, right? Not for ball pythons anyway. Isn't it interesting that this same month on July 4th, Another group of ball pythons was found in Pennsylvania, in a park just outside of Pittsburgh. This unexpected visitor was found slithering through a North Hills Park, and now police are trying to figure out how it got there. Ross Township police say someone discovered an unusual pet here in this community park over the 4th of July holiday. A python. That's really cool. Smart kid. Clearly this park is a kid's hangout, and these curious kids took one look at this photo to identify this albino python. Well done. Oh, well done. It scares me just looking at him, so... Uh... Let's clear up some misconceptions, as I like to do on this channel, about what's going on in Florida first, and then we'll go back to Pittsburgh, and we're gonna look at the grand scheme of all of this. So one thing I've heard is that these 24 ball pythons that were found in Florida are now in the hands of the FWC, and that's just not true. They were taken to the Jacksonville Herpetological Society, and then taken to a vet, and they're being rehomed. So don't worry about those snakes in particular because they're gonna be okay. They were all very healthy when they were found and it sounds like they actually have a future. So that's really good news. Despite that good news, isn't it odd that we're getting multiple reports from July of a group of ball pythons being found? FWC says these ball pythons most likely escaped or were someone's pet that was dumped here in the neighborhood. They say they are invasive and it has neighbors worried. And this is number 22 that we have found in a matter of four weeks. St. Augustine's Prairie Lakes neighborhood is crawling with ball pythons. We found them out on the main road a couple times, people under hood of a car down in the cul-de-sac, and they're crossing the road. So people are stopping to try to not run them over. Vincent Myers says most are about three to four feet long, and he's caught about 15 of them. Got an old paint roller on a grade stick with some tape. Once Myers catches the ball python, Sky Bennett with Jacksonville's Herpetological Society takes it away. Then I'll, you know, take them into the vet, get them looked at, make sure they don't need any medical attention, which a few of them have. Bennett says these aren't snakes you'd find in the wild or at a pet store. That one in particular looks to be an albino piebald got the white with the yellow top half and the red eyes. Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission tells First Coast News the ball pythons likely escaped or are released pets. A lot of the snakes, their body conditionings are pretty thick and chunky snakes, so they were being fed well wherever they came from. FWC says its officers visited the neighborhood but have not yet figured out where they came from. So it is an animal neglect and animal cruelty to release these animals into the wild because the, the likelihood of them surviving is not high. Don't kill them. Call somebody who can grab them. Um, their lives matter just as much. Just because they're a little bit scary doesn't mean that they don't deserve to live. FWC says if you have a non-native species, do not let it loose. And if you come across one, to report it to its invasive species hotline. In St. Augustine, Taylor Lovac, First Coast News, on your side.
Now I have a major gripe with what FWC is putting out about this incident. They're using the language invasive to describe a ball python, an animal that does not have any established breeding population in the state. So just taking that buzzword and labeling everything that they don't want there with it. There is no invasive ball python in Florida. There is no invasive ball python anywhere in the United States. Studies actually show that ball pythons cannot survive where they were found in Florida and it would be highly unlikely that they would even be able to survive down in the Everglades. So what's the point of labeling them as invasive? What's the point of these scare tactics? What's the point of this news report? Now, I'm not a conspiracy theorist. I like to do some deep dives into some weird stuff like cryptozoology and aliens and stuff like that for fun, but I'm not a conspiracy theorist. So when I say this, take it with a grain of salt. I'm not trying to say that this is what's happening. I'm just saying this is interesting and I'd love to know your thoughts on it. The timing of this is kind of weird, isn't it? Right on the heels of the Lacey Act, which proposes a whitelist ban on interstate travel, as well as puts the definition of what is an injurious species into the hands of the FWC. Check out this clip from Phil Goss that US ARC put out before all of this ball pythons found stuff came out. So they could literally list an animal as injurious, a species as injurious, the next day it would be illegal to move it across state lines. So if they listed ball pythons, for example, the next day it could be illegal to transport your ball pythons across state lines for any reason. So obviously that would have a major impact on commerce, but again, even pet owners. So obviously this news helps the Lacey Act, doesn't help keepers. Whoever released these animals, because somebody did release them, this is clearly a collection. There were multiple albinos, multiple albino pides, there was a blue-eyed leucistic, it looked like, and who knows how many morphs. These are not animals that are reproducing in the wild or a handful of animals that escape. This is a whole collection in both the Pennsylvania case and the Florida case. So I've heard some conspiracies going around that maybe somebody who's trying to make the industry look bad intentionally released these animals. Is it possible? I don't see why it's not possible. There's no evidence of it. We aren't going to see evidence of it. In fact, I would be surprised if we found out who released these animals at all. But it is awfully strange, isn't it? And it's super unfortunate because when you go to the comments section of these news reports and the people that are sharing them on Facebook, it's fueling the fire of fear. And people are starting to call ball pythons invasive to Florida. All it takes is FWC issuing a statement like that, a false statement like that, and all the retirees in Florida are like, oh my gosh, what are we gonna do? What are we gonna do? Well, I'll tell you one thing we can do. We can write to Senator Rubio. You can go to the Don't Blacklist Pets website, which I listed in another video, and I will list again in the description here. I will also leave the information of everybody you can contact to speak out against the Lacey Act amendments. And I also encourage you to read the Lacey Act Amendment Bill, which I will also leave below, and go to US Arc Florida's website, their YouTube, and go to US Arc's website and YouTube and get updates on all of these things. Become a member, get on their mailing list, so you can see what we can do about this issue before it becomes an even bigger issue. And we only want one of these seven legislators being contacted by their constituents right now. So if you know someone, please give them a, shoot them a message or post it on social media, whatever you want to, and say, hey, make sure you contact these people. Not right now but there will be a time when us arc is going to ask everybody to start contacting their federal representatives but that time is not right now we only want to focus on these seven sponsors and co-sponsors of these two bills and that's the only people that we want you emailing or calling or faxing letters to at this time uh, but follow us and we will let you know when we want everybody to start sending those letters so i'm going to keep this short what do you guys think do you think this is an animal activist group releasing animals to help push the Lacey Act through? Do you think this is a breeder that just couldn't take care of his animals and instead of selling them even at wholesale value and making thousand bucks or more, decided just to release them into the wild? There are other options. Somebody could have passed away and their family didn't know what to do with the snakes and released them. Or there was some bad breakup and somebody released somebody else's animals. There are many options. What do you guys think happened here? I don't have any proof of anything that points one way or the other, but it is awfully strange, isn't it? So that's going to do it for me today, guys. I know it's a real short one, but I got to go feed these guys. And then we're going to sit down and watch a show and see how that goes. So hopefully I'll see you guys there next Sunday. And until then, remember to be kind to yourselves and each other. And I'll see you on the next one. Thanks for watching.
they've been taken to her herpetological they've been taken to a herpetological <laughs> I know this is going to be one of those 